Welcome to my basic mechanical engineering playlist. Today I am going to discuss about Carnot cycle. So let's see first of all the outlines of the session. What is a Carnot cycle? Next definition of Carnot cycle. Then PV and TS diagram of Carnot cycle. Next derivation of efficiency of Carnot cycle. And at last conclusion on efficiency. So let's start from the first what is Carnot cycle. Carnot cycle is a theoretical thermodynamic cycle proposed by Leonard Carnot. It gives the estimate of the maximum possible efficiency that a heat engine during the conversion process of heat into work. So keep in mind that Carnot cycle gives the estimate of the maximum possible efficiency for converting heat into work. Now the definition of Carnot cycle. Carnot cycle is defined as an ideal reversible closed thermodynamic cycle in which there are four successive operations which are isothermal expansion here you can see then adiabatic expansion, then isothermal compression and at last adiabatic compression. Now I am going to draw the PV diagram of Carnot cycle. So it is a pressure versus volume diagram and then TS diagram that means temperature versus entropy diagram. Now let's consider the cylinder and here this one is the piston and this space is filled with the working substance and that is considered as a system. This is the insulator. Now initially insulator is put it over here and so that there will be no any heat transfer. So keep in mind that this is the heat source from where heat is supplied and this is the heat sink where working substance rejects the heat and that is at temperature T2. So keep in mind that here T1 is greater than T2. Now initially heat is supplied from the heat source to the working substance. So that here you can see the insulator is removed so that heat will be transferred from heat source to the working substance and so that it will expand. And if I want to show this process on the PV diagram, then I can say initially it is at state 1 and now it is expanded. So now it is at state 2 and this is the process 1 to 2. Now I am going to show the same 1 to process on TS diagram. So keep in mind that this 1 to process is actually isothermal process. So during that temperature is constant so it will be the horizontal line. Now as you know that this 1 2 process is the isothermal expansion process. The heat source is in contact with the cylinder here you can see and so that the air expand or you can see the working medium expands at constant temperature from V1 to V2 and during this process heat is supplied from heat source. So I can say it is at constant temperature T1 and here it is the heat supplied from the heat source and that is Q1. Now see over here carefully. Now once again insulator is covered and so that there will be no any heat transferred. But due to the inertia of this piston it will move again and that is called as the further expansion of the working substance. So it will be like that and that is called as the process 2 to 3. So this is the new state 3 and it is called as the adiabatic expansion. And you know that during the adiabatic process there will be no any heat transfer. And on the TS diagram it will be always vertical line. The adiabatic process is called as the isentropic process where entropy is constant. So it is the adiabatic expansion. The heat source is removed. Here you can see 
an insulator is covered at cylinder end air expand with reversible adiabatic process from V2 to V3 and during this process no heat is transferred. Now look at this figure again. Now once again insulator is removed and so that there will be the heat transfer. So now it is compressed from state 3 to state 4. So I can say it is the state 4 and this is the compression process and during which the temperature is constant and so that you can understand it will be the horizontal line on TS die. So during 3-4 process the insulating cover is removed here you can see so that heat sink is directly connected with the cylinder end air is compressed from state 3 to state 4 at constant temperature and hence volume is decreased from V3 to V4 and that is at constant temperature T2. During this process heat is rejected. So let's say it is Q2. Now once again look at this figure. Now once again insulator is covered so that there will be no any heat transfer so that now the remaining process is called as the adiabatic process. So it will be like this. And on TS diagram, you know that this is the adiabatic compression process, so it must be the isentropic process. And that's why it is the vertical line. So we can say during this adiabatic compression, the heat sink is removed and insulator is covered at cylinder end. Air is compressed with reversible adiabatic process from V4 to V1 and no heat is transferred. So in short we can say these two are the adiabatic process and these two are the isothermal process. Now next, during 1 to process heat supplied is equal to the work done because of you know that this is the constant temperature process and during the constant temperature process always heat supplied is exactly equal to the work done. So I can say Q1 is equal to work done during the process 1 to. And that is once again you know that P1 V1 ln V2 by V1. So keep in mind that this is the work done during the constant temperature process that we have discussed in properties of gas. Now as you know that P1 V1 is equal to MRT. So I can write over here MRT1 and here you know that V2 by V1 that is actually the expansion ratio. So you can say it is R. Let's say it is equation number 1. Now during the process 3-4, heat rejected that is exactly equal to the work done because of once again it is at constant temperature. So that you can say Q2 is equal to W3-4, here negative sign is there because of here the work done that is on the working substance. Here it is the positive work done because of work done that is developed by the working substance and that is equal to minus P3 V3 ln V4 by V3. So once again further simplification. So it will be P3 V3 ln V3 by V4 due to this minus sign. Now next for the closed cycle the expansion and the compression ratio are always equal. And so that I can say this V3 by V4 that is exactly equal to this V2 by V1. So I can say it ln R and you know that PV is equal to MRT. So you can say it is MRT2 ln R. Let's say it is equation number 2. Now next, net work done during the cycle that is equal to Q1 minus Q2. Now efficiency of Carnot cycle is equal to output upon input. And from this figure you can say the output is the net work done. So it will be W net upon input that is the Q1. So now if you put W net is equal to Q1 minus Q2 in this equation. Now simplified further. So it will be 1 minus Q2 upon Q1. Let's say it is equation number 3. So put this value in this equation. So it will be 1 minus Q2 that means MRT to LNR 
upon q1 that means mrt1 ln r so now further simplification of this so 1 minus t2 upon t1 remaining term will be cancelled so let's say it is equation number 4 so this is the final desired equation efficiency of Carnot cycle now the conclusion on this equation here you can see efficiency depends only on the temperatures of heat source and heat sink it is not depend on the working fluid write your valuable feedback in the comment box for motivating me to make more videos thanks my dear friends for watching this video